plays here by Steve Smith. And we welcome you to yet another edition of Open Court here on NBA TV. All-Star Weekend in New York. Uh, this is this is huge. Uh, and, and for the next hour, we're just going to talk about everything New York. New York basketball, the city of New York. It's going to be a blast. Uh, and, he, and here's the panel. Uh, oh, you, you look familiar. Shaquille O'Neal uh, is here. Born in, born in Newark, New Jersey. Brick City, Ernie, say it correctly. I'm not talking about your free throws. <laughs> oh! So funny, Kenny. I'm just saying, man. Ernie, yeah, I Ernie, I laugh. make them when I need to make them. Yeah, I got two, two. Now. We took us down that road. Old, it's, it's not my fault. Uh, Grant Hill uh, is here to talk uh, All Star Weekend in New York. So is, and, and you're going to get very tired of hearing this, uh, but New York's own Kenny the Jet Smith. No, so, no. So go ahead and say it right now. Ken NY. Ken NY. Oh, they almost made me Sony because I was so NY. <laughs> they almost made, named me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice when we have a, a first timer on open court, and that's the situation today because John Starks, who uh, spent eight years with the Knicks out of his 13 years in the NBA, uh, is joining us. This is going to be. Um, an experience for you, and I hope a good experience. And, uh, Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and to his left is, uh, and again, making yet another, uh, he's he's the Cal Ripken of open court. He never <laughs> misses it. He's the A.C. Green. Steve Smith, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Uh, so, guys, before we even get into basketball in New York, let's just talk about the host city for All-Star Weekend, New York City. Um, Jet, because uh, you're born and raised, I will I will let you I will let you begin. Describe the city of New York. If someone has never been there, Kenny, how would you describe it? It's a melting pot, and um, it's every three four blocks. There's a different culture, different experience, a different sound, a different feel, different smell, different texture. So you don't have to be pigeonholed to be anything. And the other thing about it is, celebrity doesn't really matter in New York because there's so many people who feel they're doing so well in their category. You walk down the street and the baker on that block say, I'm the best baker on this, in this damn block, and I don't care who you are, you're going to wait in my line <laughs> like everybody else. That, that is a New York That's true. mentality. That's true. <laughs> what is it? What's it uh, you're, you've spent a lot of time in New York, living in Connecticut now, but I mean, you're a New York guy, mm -hmm. John, and coming from Tulsa, how different was it to go from Tulsa, Oklahoma, to New York City? Uh, people always tell me they act like Tulsa don't have, don't have buildings. No, you do have buildings. No you, no, you don't. No, you don't. I've seen them. Don't even try. No, you don't. Y'all got buildings. They're not tall. Though. We got. Let me see. One, two. Yeah, we we have yes. buildings. Yeah, we have tall buildings. But what 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 was it like to be in New York after mm -hmm. not? I mean, New York's unlike any other city. What was it like to you? It, it was special, you know, because when you growing up watching basketball and 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 you you know watch the games at the garden and they do the panoramic view of the city and stuff you know like one day you know i want to be there one day and when i got the opportunity to come to new york i was like ready to just get there and and show what i can do and when i first got off that plane my agent uh he said you know this is going to be a little different it's going to be a little different. And you said, hey, Tulsa. haven't you been to Tulsa? It's got <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I describe New York like this, and, and I tell them, I say, uh, New York is like, you know, a little bit like Oklahoma, a little bit like Tulsa, but just more of it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah a lot more of, more of it. You know, more, you know what, and more buildings, you know. Uh, like Kenny said, you know, the culture there that you get from New York, which I, you don't get that in Tulsa. Right. You know, different facet of people. Do you remember the first time you went to New York? You know what? Uh, the first time, uh, Kenny, you'll be appreciate this. AAU. Mm. We're playing the Gauchos. We drive from Detroit. Drove from Detroit? Yes. All the way to play the Gauchos. When we got there, they had like a minute 20 on the clock to warm up. Oh, we're going to cheat you. Oh, yeah, for sure. If we can't we're gonna, beat you, we're going to cheat We the same thing. <laughs> and to get a chance to see how many people because, you know, being from Detroit, we just thought basketball, most people, mm -hmm. that many people came to see a game. And it was a small gym. It was the Gauchos gym. Right. It was, that was our only 
One loss in two years of my age. Take that back wow. to Detroit with you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I should have told me one, man. I know, right? Tell the truth. I mean, I would have <laughs> hey, got the call when this show came on. Yeah, yeah. Well, we beat them, <laughs> <laughs> well, We didn't beat them. There was a minute 20 on the clock for them to warm up. We beat them. Yeah. Hey, uh, so, great. Remember your first trip there to the Big Apple? You know, I grew up in, in D.C., so we were up there all the time, taking the train up to, uh, to New York. I, I do remember my first trip to the Garden. And uh, it was a, a Georgetown uh, St. John's game mm. back in 1984. Wow. And so I was a big Georgetown fan. And uh, I think that was around the time that I really was starting to fall in love with basketball. And, you know, to be in the garden as a fan, uh, and of course, to go and play, uh, as, you know, as a ball player in college and in the NBA, the, the, the knowledge of the game that the fans had it was just was unbelievable. And one of my things was, you know, I'd go on the road and in pregame, I'd always get hyped, you know, and I'd try to get myself going and get, you know, get a nice lather or whatever. In New York, in the garden as a player, I had to calm down. <laughs> I had to like, because you just like, you was just so, there was a, a buzz in the arena and you were so like excited and, you know, the drive to the garden and everything. And like, I, I didn't play well when I got too hyped up. And mm -hmm. so I had to learn to like, okay, just calm down a little bit. And, and relax and go out there and play. Yeah. But there's no place, you know, no place like it. Yeah, we'll get more stories from all the guys about uh, what it's like to, to play at the Garden Shack. Um, what do you have to do when you go to New York? What do you make it a point of doing when you go to New York? Well, as a youngster, you know, we always had to go to the Macy's Day Parade. Always had to do that. And uh, my first time, my first time going to the Garden, I was a, a medium level juvenile delinquent and <laughs> all right, a high level <laughs> juvenile delinquent. <laughs> and, yeah, and my father I know you know, he levels. used to <laughs> you know, he used to you know, he used to motivate me with the Knicks and Dr. J. So, you know, one time I had a bad report card, he said, Hey, your next report card, I'll take you to watch the Knicks and Dr. J play. Dr. J was my favorite player. So at that time I you know, I still had no idea what I wanted to become. So we're sitting up high because, you know, we didn't have no money back then. And, you know, it's kind of a slow game. And Dr. J goes baseline and the crowd goes crazy. And everybody stands up. And I was like, Daddy, this is what I want to do when I grow up. And, you know, because of that and you know, because of the atmosphere that was in the garden, because of what, what Dr. J did, I, I quickly stopped being a, 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 a juvenile delinquent and, you know, really, really high started. Level. High level. Yeah, high level. And yeah. really, really started f focusing on basketball. So then when I'm watching college, a guy by the name of Patrick Ewing, he's my favorite player. You know, after watching this guy, you know, watching how he played, watching the ferocity that he played with, when he went to New York, I became a Knicks fan, especially when I was in college. But when I went pro, because of this guy over here, that quickly changed. Yeah. I hated the Knicks. We're just getting started <laughs> talking about New York City, talking about All-Star Weekend, what it's like to play at Madison Square Garden, what it's like to grow up in the city of New York with the, with the level of basketball there. We're going to cover it all on this edition of Open Court. When I was coming up in the late 80s in high school, we felt like New York got all the all the credit. And so we <laughs> 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 uh, welcome you back to another award-winning episode of Open Court. And on this All-Star Weekend, we're talking about the host city, New York, and talking about New York basketball in general. And uh, I, would, I just want to be educated by, by you guys now on Rucker Park. Um, Number one, show of hands, who's played at Rucker? One, two. Well, I have played. a story about Rucker. Have it, you played at Rucker? No. Kenny, you're the only one to, to play at Rucker well, Park? Well, see, coming up, Rucker Park wasn't the park to play at if you were that guy coming up. So for me, all the other parks, uh, you know, Lost Battalion Hall in Queens, um, you'd have uh, 116th Street, you have King Towers tournaments. These tournaments and these leagues, and citywide for sure, was the biggest league ever. Because citywide would put a Brooklyn, a Brooklyn site, a Manhattan site, a Queens site, a, a Bronx site, and then at the end, each borough would play against each other, and the finals would be at Madison Square Garden. Mm. So that was the tournament to play in if you were 16, 17, 18 years old. And then as uh, the Entertainment League came about, and Ray for Austin, Skip Chamalu, then the Rucker got rejuvenated. But, right. but before me, it was like Dr. J, guys who were already yeah, still there. Got this, still got this mystique even. He had the mystique because the pro players played there. Yeah. But the up-and-coming guys didn't play there a lot. What's your story on Rucker? 
They wouldn't allow me to play. You, you tried to? Yeah. Who wouldn't this? allow you? The organizer of the park. As soon as I came in, I said, no, no, man, you can't play. You're too good. But I'm gonna tell you no, because Rucker Park, you, 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 I'm a, in, in New York City, our motto is you bring your game, not your name. So they wouldn't have. Man, they Shaq would have killed out there. They would let you know, people, man. They would have let him kill. He would have broken the backboard. They would have yeah. let him break yeah. the backboard. And that's why they want me to play. Thank you, Grant. I mean, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, was, yeah, it, where was that, Shaq? I don't know what year, 1996, <laughs> 96, 97. There's all these stories. There's always just a little bit of truth to a lot of these stories and a lot of BS. He said, I know you, big fella. <laughs> when, 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 when you had to go to that other park, and what park was that that you had to prove yourself? You know, when you leave your cocoon, there's always that moment. Riverside Church. And the first time I saw kids who took basketball more serious than my dad took his job. So it, it was a wide awakening for me. I had never seen that. I had never seen that type of energy, that type of mo motivation. And I, and I was like, I just have to be part of this. So about two years later, I, I went up to Riverside. I played with them. I was like, I got to move up there because this is, these are the guys that if I'm going to be good enough, I have to play with them. And you know what it's like. I mean, having a, been up there so much of uh, so much of your life, what it's like you on the playgrounds up there in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New York is just a special place. And not until you get to New York and understand what it means to play on the playgrounds, it's a very special place to be. You know, because of the talent, talent level is just unmatched. You know, because you, everybody thought New York was if you're gonna if you're going to be a top-notch basketball player, you had to make your bones in that city. How was your appreciation for New York fans different uh, from playing at other teams? You played in a lot of different other yeah. places. What made New York so special? I remember coming to the garden and got I got stopped by this kid. He was 10 years old, and he rattled off my stats. Never, ever, ever I have seen a kid rattle off my stats. New York City is a basketball town. You know, you can play from the time, you, you know, they put a ball in your hand to you 60, 70 years. You see it here. There's a court on every playing. block. Yeah, well, Kenny, exactly. I, I think for me, going to play the Knicks, you can have a basketball conversation everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then whoever you're talking to <clears throat> might have never played the game of basketball, mm -hmm. but you can have an intelligent basketball conversation whether it's in Brooklyn and Queens or in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. People know the game, understand the game, and not afraid to tell you what you're not good at. <laughs> right, right. Sure. I remember that place, many where you didn't do this, and they remember plays. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's what kind of makes it special. And you know what this brings up, too? I think it brings up the matter of pride in where you come from and who plays the best basketball. Because you guys all oh, know the best basketball is played on the, in the, uh, on the streets of New York or on the... Or, no, 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 it's, no, no, it's no, Chicago, no, 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 or no, 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 it's, it's DC, DC or, it's, or it's, and we're going to show them when we make the drive from Detroit to New York, yes. where they, I mean, there's a lot of that out there, is there not, Grant Hill? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, like when I was coming up in the late 80s in high school, we felt like New York got all the, all the credit. And so, it's true, we felt like, it, and so there was a little bit of a chip on our shoulder when we played against either a New York team or someone you're matched up with was from New York. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth of the matter is, I remember my McDonald's All-American game, we had five guys from New York in the McDonald's All-American game. Mm -hmm. And probably the best one wasn't even on it, Jamal Mashburn. So that shows you how loaded New York basketball was mm -hmm. back then. But we felt from D.C. that, you know what, we're, we're just as good. We have a certain flair and style to our game. And, you know, a lot of times we met up. It was... It wasn't, it was about like D.C. versus New York. And yeah. I'm sure yeah. Detroit, Chicago, all the other major cities felt the same way. I think the one major advantage that the New York players had is the media was always behind them. Yeah. Because when I came back from Germany and I was making a name for myself in high school, it was about 15 New York players. Right. And like they weren't even averaging half of what I was averaging. I was like, who are these guys? And everywhere I went, the New well, York guys, were you New York in high guys. School? 39, 22, and 7. <laughs> <laughs> and, I shot, and I shot 62.9% from the three-point line. Anyway. Since middle school, right? Yeah, yeah, since middle school. No, but, no, but it was guys like uh, Jamal Faulkner, mm. Kenny Anderson, Conrad McRae. It was like four or five guys that was ranked ahead of me, and I was like, 
What well, makes these guys so special? And then when I saw them play, they were okay, but they really wasn't. Well, I good. always say this about New York, because everybody <laughs> always says, you know. Guys got a lot of hype behind you. No, no, well, people say Texas, New York has the best player. Y'all didn't have any back then. Y'all didn't, I mean, you, I don't remember seeing Shaq until the McDonald's All-American well, game. That's my point. And so New never York saw him. all the media. Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's hiding out in Germany. Yeah, I'm like, man. <laughs> no, I always felt New York had guys who shouldn't have made it, make it. To Division One basketball, why, or, they, and or, why, why is because that? because of the culture, because it's a way of because of the media. Every hype. every third block, there's a basketball court. So mm -hmm. like when you, I never got a call to go, hey, you want to go play baseball? Hey, you want to go throw a football? Every time you got that call, it's like, yo, we going to hoop. So everybody has an idea how to set a pick, how to roll to the basket. So it makes them look like they're better players than they are, just because they have a better understanding at an early age. But then they don't have the physical skills that can keep going. But I always say, and Mark Jackson to me is the, the quintessential New Yorker. If you describe Mark Jackson to somebody you didn't know him, say, well, here's a guy can't jump. He's not really that quick. No, he's not a great shooter. No, he doesn't defend well. But he played 20 years in the yeah. NBA. Like, he is what New York basketball represents in that sense. He doesn't smart. have all of those he was skills. Very, Mark but, was an incredible smart player. But you just know how to play. Yeah, That's exactly. it. Yeah, That's exactly. it. You just know how to play, and you can know how to stay on the floor. You know angles and things of that nature. But the best players in the world come from everywhere, and they don't come from New York City. That is not the truth. When we come back, Madison Square Garden. What's it like to play there uh, <laughs> as a Nick, as an opponent? Uh, All-Star Weekend. In the finals. <laughs> <laughs> In the finals. We'll be back. Whoa. It's a root for the Knicks. My dream was for Mark to get an ankle twist and they trade for me. <laughs> so I could come back to New York. I was like, I want to go back and play with the Knicks. Year in and year out, Madison Square Garden is among the busiest venues on the planet, hosting a myriad of events such as concerts, wrestling, the circus, and of course, hockey and basketball games. The heritage of sports in the Big Apple is epitomized at the Garden. Diehard fans, regardless of background, economic or social status, blend together to create a buzz only the passionate people of New York can. We welcome you back to Open Court. We're talking about uh, All-Star Weekend in New York. And, uh, and now let's talk about the Garden. And let's talk uh, to John Starks. Remember the first time you ran out that tunnel and onto the floor wearing the New York Knicks colors in that building? Uh, it was such a hype moment for me uh, because I'm trying to make this team. And as you getting ready to go through that tunnel, you hear the fans. It's just that energy is starting to build, starting to build, starting to build. And when you hit the floor, I remember going, coming out first and foremost, and I look up and you see all the, you know, banners up there of the great players, championships. And then when you take the floor, it's just a, an incredible energy. And I played terrible. Just <laughs> like to Grant point, point, you have to calm yourself down. You know, there's that much energy in the garden. You have to calm yourself down. And I was one of those players. I'm, al I'm already hyped up, you know, as it is. And so after that first game, second game, I played very well and kept going, kept going, kept going because I knew how to just relax. Do you find yourself playing to the crowd in that setting? You do. You really do. How does that manifest itself? I mean, do you find out the kind of player you are that gets a reaction from, mm -hmm. from those fans? Because you said you had to earn your way. Oh, you, under, you, under had, you have to team. earn your stripes. Yeah. You have to earn your stripes in New York. There's nothing given to you. You know, you have, like I said, you have a 10-year-old kid cursing you out, <laughs> calling you a bum. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and but what were the qualities and the character? Yeah, exactly. He's a bum, hey, Dad, he's, he's a bum. bum. This dog's exactly. guy's a bum. <laughs> what were the qualities and the characteristics of your personality and of your game mm -hmm. that won you over to the fans of New York? I let it hang out. But that's that's it. You know, New York fans appreciate when you go out and you get 110 percent. Starks pulls back. It's good. John Starks knocks down the jumper and a little extra cheer from the guard crowd. You know, you could lose the game, but as long as they know you out there trying uh, to win and, and you're giving your your best out there night in and night out. Because I always say New York is a blue collar city, and so they pay good money to come see you play hard you know they 
they point you out. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of guys that played with me got pointed out a lot of times. But, you know, they just appreciate hard play, smart play, and uh, just compete. And I, I remember, yeah, I remember the that. first time we played against Shaq. And, you know, I thought Patrick was big until I seen him against Shaq. I like, big fella, you, you a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he just dropped him. And Shaq, he's not going to remember this, though. I did block his shot. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, you yeah, didn't. I did. Stop it. Yeah, I did. Stop In the garden. It. In the garden. In the garden. Stop it. <laughs> Patrick went for the steal. He missed. And big fella turned to go up. I said, you got to get up there quick. I jumped and caught. <laughs> John, wake up. You're dreaming. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> When, when, I, when I came in in 92, you know, we had a lot of little battles, like like Orlando versus Miami. We used to battle you guys. And Chicago was winning the championship. We used to battle those guys. And, of course, me and Morning in Charlotte. But New York was the testing ground. Like, you had to go to New York and play well, and you had to be able to, to uh, adapt to their physical style of play. And everybody was watching. Like, if you went up to New York and got punked by their guys, <laughs> everybody was going to know you were soft. So it was probably, it was probably the toughest place to play. One, I couldn't stop Pat on the outside. Two, if I got by him, now I got to face Oakley. I got to face Bonner. I got a shot blocker like, shot blocker like, like me. Him. And, those guys, <laughs> <laughs> and they taught me a lot about myself because, uh, you know, if you can take a hit from those guys mm -hmm. and get up and continue to play, you can make it. But, you know, a lot of times after the game, you know, I thought my ribs and neck was broke because Oakley and Bonner and Mason going in there, mm -hmm. yeah. you better go strong or you're going to be on your back and you're going to be on your back. And they never said... They never said, uh, I'm sorry. Or anything, but they, <laughs> they hit you and they look at you and they dare you to get up and talk smack. And then, you know, you could, you could be dominating the game and still beating them, but they're going to they gonna, they gonna mess you up every well, time. How many times did you say, I'm sorry, in your career? Never. never. <laughs> yeah, never like, but, well, those Knicks would never say, I'm sorry, neither did you. But, you know, they uh, taught me a lot. And, you know, growing up in New Jersey, it was, it was similar playing with, you know, guys uh, uh, bigger than me and older than me. But, you know, that was a, a special place to play. Yeah. I mean, because I didn't play against uh, kids my age. I always played against men and all that. But, <laughs> but the yeah, I played against men. I'm glad you played it right there. No, I'm sorry. I played against men. What high school was that? <laughs> <laughs> the Army High School. Yeah, the but Army the day. one thing I remember more about Ma like Madison Square Garden is, you know, because we actually played in the finals, obviously, there. But is, <laughs> how's that the, hey Kenny, uh, is this a Kenny that show today? No, 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 he, no, he opened up old wounds. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I don't welcome to the Kenny and Why show. I, I, I remember like when the guy comes on and said, "Welcome to the world's most famous arena." That that voice or whoever that is, I, that like sticks in my head. Good evening, everyone. And that organ. Damn. Now, oh, that's the only arena that has a live audit, or organ in the arena. Then the, the, what was made it so different also is that the spotlight was on the court, court. Yeah. and the, all the fans were dark. So when you started playing, you couldn't see in the stands. Mm -hmm. You could only see like the first couple of rows. And it was like everything was focused on the game. And I was like, man, this is something that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, I get chills right now thinking about it from high school, playing in college there. Playing and we played St. John's, been there in high school and, and in the pros, but the pro level was the most difficult because in the finals, my friends were rooting against me. Well, how, many, how many tickets did you have to get when you would uh, when you'd play there? I had probably like 20 tickets and I'd have to buy most of them because they wouldn't give you free tickets to <laughs> the all guy. So but the crazy part about it to have your own friends rooting against you. Yeah. For the first time. I well, mean, maybe coming to the hotel. <laughs> maybe they weren't really friends. No, but yeah. they were Nick fans first. Okay. Yes. And so, I mean, and they, that, that was they the don't era change when everyone stripes. had, like, the they, designs they in their head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My whole, all, like, seven of my friends had the Nick logo cut in their hair. <laughs> and, I, and they come to my hotel room. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Get out. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> in the finals? I got a Kenny, you you know, New York fan, people from New York obviously are very proud of the, pr uh, proud of the Knicks. Playing for the Rockets. Did you ever, like, follow the Knicks? All the time. Secretly, like, root for No, not secretly. Okay. I used to root for the Knicks. My dream was for Mark to get an ankle twist and they trade for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I could come back to New York. I was like, I want to go back and play with the Knicks. And they had Starks and you. I was like, man, because, and like Shaq said, when you played against their teams. Yes. 
You knew that you had mental fortitude and cojones. <laughs> like, well, well, <laughs> I, well, I think for me, King, you said most Detroiters, we like to talk and play. Right, no question. So I could carry on a conversation with different guys in the arena. I was about to Talk. say, you're going to have to, in the arena, when you play New York. I could mm -hmm. carry on a conversation, and I played better with somebody talking to me. So I would carry on conversation. It wasn't Spike Lee. No. Everybody exactly. talks about Spike, but it's different guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they would always say, Smitty, we're here. <laughs> right. I said, I'm here. But to have a conversation. Right. Most Detroit players love to have a conversation. And our battles was. Oh, we had some wars. Legendary because. Yeah. He wouldn't let me post up, no. so I would just fall, grab him and hold on him, and we go to the ground. It this was man is what respect. six seven, six eight. I'm six two. They list me at six five. Right. But I'm six two actually. And so, Ralph said you have to get him off the post. Do whatever you have to do to get him off the post. And I used to try to get up underneath him, front him. I let him push me out, then I spin back. He's off the post. Right. I remember I blocked the shot. I always come up with these. He blocked oh, the shot. Get out of the face. Oh, come on. See, look at that. Yeah, see? He blocked the shot. One time. <laughs> one time. Er Ernie. <laughs> what, what, what? The funniest thing happened to me in New York one time. You know, people, people talk about the stars that's out in L.A. Yeah. But my favorite female actress was in the stands one day. I ain't going to say no names. Holly Berry. <laughs> <laughs> so I get fouled. I think Oak, one of the guys that mess with it. So I get fouled, and I'm looking, and she winked at me. I had to call a time on her. Oh, I promise on, you I had to man. call time. Went back to the bed. Maddie said, what are you come doing? I said, Wake up, Shaq. You tell her. Wake up, Shaq. She winked. She this winked is the worst street. No, it's <laughs> not. She winked at me, so oh, I called a time on Maddie was like, what are you doing? I was like, Holly, looking at me make sure. I get the ball the next 50 times coming down the court. The next 50 times? Oh, no, yeah. Holly's watching. Get it to me. I'm, I'm about to go to work. I'm about to go to work. Pat, you about to be barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ernie, I just made that up. I was going to say, more made-up stories are coming up on this edition of Open Court. We're talking about New York. We're talking about the Garden. We're talking about All-Star Weekend. And we'll be back with more after this. After I did that headbutt, I didn't have no problems out ready for the rest of my career. He just played basketball. He stopped talking. He stopped, you know, doing the dirty things that he was doing. And we just played. <laughs> we played. We played. To open court here on NBA TV, we're talking about the All-Star Weekend in New York. Um, now, when you look at the panel here, um, Kenny, you've been front and center at All-Star Weekend before in the three-point shootout and the slam dunk contest. Um, John Starks, an all-star in 1994. Mm. What was it like for you to walk into that uh, that locker room? Um, and you're a first-time all-star. Guys are there who have Shaq, been there. Shaq was on that yeah, team was back in 94. Yeah. I, I remember, I, you know, and you know, we sat down in the locker room, and I remember telling the guys, you know, uh, I'm, it's an honor to play with you guys and what have you, but this may be my first and last one, so I want to win. You know what I mean? As simple as that. You know, I know All-Star Games are about going out and having fun and 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 to the last five minutes, but I want to make this a very special All-Star Game. And and so I remember, you know, particularly telling everybody that that I want to win. Uh, but you know, as soon as you come out of there, and, and the fans are extremely excited, you know, about you know that particular uh, game, and you know, and the players. You know, you're talking about. Uh, what, 24 of the best players during that particular time. And you hear your name, intro you're introduced mm -hmm. along with those other guys. He's an all-star and his explosive scoring and stifling defense helping his team of power and ease. It, it was very special, you know what I mean, because, you know, a lot of guys played in this league and, and don't have that opportunity to be an all-star. And, you know, you grasp that moment and the feeling that you have knowing that this is a special time in your career, knowing that you front and center and then the world is watching. And you want to go out there and you play. You don't want to miss your first shot. <laughs> I don't think I missed my first shot. I hit uh, two shots. How many I shots you blocked that game? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> nine, nine points and, and no blocks in that All-Star game. No. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so in 1998, Last time uh, the All-Star Game was held uh, at the Garden. And we got, you were there, Smitty. Grant, you were there. Shaq, you were there. If playing in the Garden in a regular season game or a playoff game is big, how big is playing in an All-Star Game in Madison Square Garden? 
It was phenomenal. I mean, my family, my my rec, my little league coach was there. Uh, my wife, and then it's just like getting your name called in the draft, being able to play in that All Star game. And then it's at the Garden, and then it's Shaq, it's Grand Hill. Because even though you're an All Star yourself, you're looking across, and that's Michael, and that's yeah. Kobe, and that's Carl. And to come out and play in the Garden, and then to have a teammate and a guy I grew up with, Glenn Rice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of special because mm -hmm. we played against each other growing up, played against each other at Michigan, Michigan State, played together in Miami, and then for us to be all-stars together in 98, uh, I thought I was about to win the MVP trophy for you, sure. You, you caught fire. You had 14 <laughs> yeah, yeah, in that yeah. game. And then they subbed me. Mike what happened? Me. They subbed me. They subbed you for Georgia. Yeah, I remember. I said, I, I'm not understanding this. I, <laughs> I got 12 out of the last 14 points. Yeah. yeah. Come yeah. sit down, young know, fella. Come MJ down, wound up. <laughs> MJ wound up getting the MVP. Yeah, he did. You had 14. You had 15 in that game. Great. Yeah. No, I remember. Um, Shaq, you, know, you had 12. I they did. Don't, they don't pass. Yeah, you had 12. Yeah, the Kimbe nah, was gone. Yeah. 15. Right? Yeah, the Kimbe was gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue, Zimbabwe chicken. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, oh man. <laughs> what, what are your What are your memories of that game, Grant? Honestly. I remember it, it became kind of like the MJ Kobe show, and they were kind of going back. And Kobe was, you know, trying. I guess he was a he was a sub that year, but got voted in, and he was trying to get his. And it was almost like MJ's got to kind of show that you know he's still top dog. And so it was kind of like here, Mike. Yeah. Like you know, and, and so you know, you might have had. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, but it was great. I mean, here you are on the court with MJ. And, yeah. you know, we had all competed against him and to finally be on the court. And it was kind of like, man, go at him. You know, just, you know, you wanted to see him get off when he wasn't out there with Smitty. <laughs> and uh, it, so that's what I remember mostly from, uh, you know, from that All-Star game. Was Halle Berry at that All-Star game? No, Shaq? she wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, she wasn't there at that one. But, you know, for me, it was, I, I had added pressure there. You know, it was already pressure playing in the garden. But when you're from that area, you know, All-Star game, I had to get about 100 tickets. So, you know, just having, you know, family from Texas, from Georgia, just having them there and then, you know, just being on the court with all the other greats. It was, it was a situation. And then when you got Mike and Kobe going, going, going at it, I really didn't touch the ball. So that's why I ended up disgustingly with 12 points because that's not <laughs> my resume to have 12 <laughs> points. <laughs> all right, it's not good enough. Don't even say it. Don't even repeat. Two out 12 of four points. Two out of four from the stripe. 50%. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 50%. That's not bad. That's not bad. How different is the... Uh, the star um, quotient, uh, and it, like you got, you got to, you got some at Staples, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, how do you compare the, the the Hollywood stars with the New York stars that you can see as you're as you're running up and down the floor and they're sitting courtside? You know, I always felt like in in L.A. the stars go to the game to be seen. You know, it's kind of like going to a premiere of a movie. You know, the red card. Aside from a guy like Jack. I mean, Jack's a Yeah, I mean, Jack, Jack, Jack it's probably, uh, you know, doesn't fit that description. But I felt yeah, in New York. You, yeah, you better clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, oh, man, you just shot yourself in the foot. But I, but I feel like in New York, the stars that are at the, like, they're, they're fans. Like, they're real fans, and they're going no, no different than any of the other people in the building. They're there. Yeah, they get perks because they're stars and they get good seats. But they know the game. They, I mean, obviously, Very Spike, knowledgeable, yeah embodies that you know what i'm saying he's somebody who's a star who really is passionate about his team but all of them they're passionate about the game of basketball and passionate about the knicks and you you can feel that you can sense that when you're there playing i got a question for john mm -hmm. back in between 92 and 96 all the battles we had what team did y'all hate to play the most hate to play the most yeah indiana i want you to say orlando <laughs> no, we, yeah. we got up for you guys. Well, you, no, we love, you, 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 know, you and Reggie. Yeah, you yeah. and Reggie had oh, a very yeah, special yeah, yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the, the, the reason why is because they, they had the same type of team that we had. Mm. Right. They were built the same way. They were built the same way, and we hated them just because they were built the same way. Right. You know, you're talking about you had the Davis boys, you have yeah. Reggie, Rick Smith. Same, you know, obviously uh, the point guard, Mark, was there at the time. You know, they were built the same way we was built, and they played the same way we played. You know? So out. we know it's going to be a grinded-out, dogged-out style game. You and Reggie cool now? Yeah. 
What's right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see each other. We're not going to go up and slap each other. <laughs> How you doing, Reggie? <laughs> I'm doing a fan job. <laughs> when did you guys... After it happened, how long did it take for you guys to ever wow. address the headbutt thing after after it had happened? I, I, t I, t I tell people that that particular play had to happen, mm -hmm. and a lot of you guys can attest to this, because mm -hmm. Reggie was the type of player, he's going to go at you, he's going to get up underneath your skin. If he didn't respect you, he's going to keep on you for the, for the rest of your career. And so I told him, after I did that headbutt, I didn't have no problems at Reggie yeah. for the rest of my career. He just played basketball. He stopped talking. He stopped, you know, doing the dirty things that he was doing, and we just played. <laughs> Nick's off to the slow start, hitting only one. Now make it two of seven as John Starks was able to convert on a beautiful spin move. And Starks and Miller going at each other, and John Starks has been thrown out. Look at Yui's reaction. How impressed were you with, with Reggie's reaction to that headbutt? Oh, man, that's straight Hollywood. That was all yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. That was all Hollywood. Yeah. You know, it's I just, I just it's tapped him. Oh. <laughs> Mike Tyson just punched me. Oh. <laughs> Forget about that. Patrick and Oak, I was so mad. I didn't feel Patrick and Oak. They were like, slap me. Bow. Bow. What you doing? What you doing? And I'm just walking out, and I was about ready to go up in the stands. Because a fan like said something, I was about ready, and the guard grabbed me and pushed me on in there. Then uh, I, I, I'm not gonna even go there. I had a, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna I had go an there. NBA Finals experience when I had a, uh, I had a, I had like a slight headache, so I was like, and then I was like, let me go down to the CVS or the whatever Walmart, whatever it was, <laughs> and go get uh, some Advil or whatever. So I'm, I'm going through the aisles, you know, looking for the stuff, <laughs> and the guys on the mic goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, someone needs help in aisle three because Derek Harper and John Stocks will be all over him tonight. <laughs> he needs help. And then the whole, Get out of here. God, the whole CVS starts going, go New York, go New York, go. Get go out of here. New York, go. The whole way out. And that's I was awesome. like, wow. this is crazy. That's, I don't, it, it, that's a true story? That's a true story. Wow. Halle Berry is not a true story. <laughs> that's a true story. Nah. In my mind, it's a true story. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you blocked his shot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, reality and, and uh, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap things up right after this. Well, there's really no city like New York <laughs> and it's a special place and I think the people there bring that swag, that energy, that love and appreciation for the game of basketball into the garden. So it's not so much the garden, I think it's the people. Check out NBA.com for more Open Court. Here to wrap things up on open court on NBA TV. Uh, can't let uh, a show with John Starks go by without bringing up uh, one of the great moments. Uh, uh, when you talk about playoff moments and when you talk about in-game dunks, mm. the dunk um, over Michael. And Horace. And Horace. And Horace. Mm. And there's a few people. And the city of Chicago. Uh, <laughs> take me through that. Take me through that and play. Mike always says he wasn't in I, that picture. I know. But I got a big pain at the house that he was. I, I think that's you up there. Uh, no, it, 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 and all these guys can attest to it. And Rouse used to tell me this all the time. He said, some point in time in the game, you're going to see a pl something that you can use at the end of the game. And what I was seeing is that B.J. Armstrong was cheating to play. He was cheating to play. And what I mean by that, Patrick would come over and set a pick. When I cut my eyes to come off the pick, he would jump to my high side. You know how Chicago like to mm -hmm. push you baseline and trap you. That particular play, I was coming down. I was slow dragging him down the court, and I saw that Bill Cartwright was still high. And B.J. had his back to him, and he didn't know he was, wasn't there. And so when I got there, I just hesitated, and he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He was going to jump to my high side. I cut my eyes early. He jumped. Patrick came and gave him a little shove, and I just took off. No thought. No thought. All I saw was Horace Grant, and I knew I had to go in strong. That's it. When I jumped, I jumped with everything I had inside of me. Dunked it, spent out, and ran down the court because Chicago liked to push the ball out there, play, catch you sleeping. 
players coming up, my teammates coming up to me. Ah, great play, great play. The fans just, the garden just erupted. I remember, man, you know, I, I go to Derek G to the golf tournament every year, and, and you know, and so Derek was holding something at his place, and um, they was in there shooting pool. I'm running fashionably late as usual. And I come in, and Michael on the uh, pool table holding court as usual. And as soon as he saw me, first thing he said, you didn't dunk on me. <laughs> you didn't dunk on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you, you still see that competitiveness in each other. Hey, uh, so as we, as we close things out here, uh, I mean, obviously, that's one of the great moments. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who's ever been to Madison Square Garden or anybody who was there that night will remember that. But uh, uh, will it always be the Mecca? Will Madison Square Garden always be the Mecca? Is there, is there another place in line as being the place? To watch an NBA basketball game. I don't think so. I think New York will always be the Mecca. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tradition there. And, you know, not, not you know, particularly now, but their style of play has always been, been very, very different. And, you know, there's, there's a tremendous amount of media hype behind them still. And you got a lot of youngsters coming out of New York, and the fans are so knowledgeable. I would say New York is number one. And I'm going to go with Boston. Boston fans are like that. And I don't really know number three or number four. But New York and Boston, you know, very similar. The fans there... They have knowledge of the game, and they're diehard fans. And, you know, they may give up during the season if the, if the season's not going well, but they always fall back on next year. All right, you got us this year, but we'll be better next year. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a couple of draft picks coming. We're going to make a couple of trades. So, like, they're, you know, even if it's not going their way, they'll always be New York Knicks. Yeah, I, I guess, and I guess the question is, in, in, in ranking places that are just special to play in, will there be a place that, that ever tops Madison Square Garden? No. I don't think so. No. Um, you know, there, there are certainly nicer arenas. There are certainly louder arenas. But I think the combination of uh, the energy, the, the, the understanding of the game, uh, and I just think the city itself. I mean, New York, there's no, you know, I don't want you to hear this, Kenny, but there's really no city like New York. <laughs> and it's a special place. And I think the people there bring that swag, that energy, that love and appreciation for the game of basketball into the garden. So it's not so much the garden. I think it's the people. It's a, well, it's a vibrant place, make man. It it's on the what streets. It is. It's vibrant. Well, you can yeah. feel the electricity. It goes right into well, the building. Can, you know, yeah. let you have the last word, but <laughs> I don't, the garden should never be a new arena, in my opinion. They should always remodel it, but they never should be a new arena. I think it'll always well, we be have. a mecca. Put a billion dollars in I know, it. but it's still, <laughs> nice. yeah. it shouldn't never be torn down. But you yeah, didn't, it, it, it didn't lose its essence. No, it, it didn't. At all. Yeah, it and did I, I think your basketball experience, um, the media there, the knowledge of the game, it will always be number one. I will say that organization mm. got to get going to make it get back up to being the mecca. And I'm not saying they have to win a championship, but you have to be a place where you want to go in and beat the Knicks. Yeah. Um, Team's got to be relevant. It has to you be gotta relevant. Matter. They got to matter. They got to matter. And I think when they matter, it, it trickles down to college basketball in New York, to high school basketball and the interest and everybody's intensity about it as well. So when the Knicks are playing well in those eras, that's when all those All-American high school players were coming there. It's because the interest of basketball by the to want to play is intensified as well. But it's, it's like you, you, that arena has the ghost of the past when you walk in it. You feel it. Mm -hmm. You feel that, and not only from a basketball standpoint, you feel Muhammad Ali fighting Joe Frazier. Mm -hmm. You feel not the true. concert. You feel, not, you feel the, the current day Jay-Z concerts. You, you feel all of that when you walk in, and it, and it feels different. Okay, we're, we almost got to go, but what you got? Yeah, can I ask John one crazy question? No. No, go ahead. <laughs> Did you ever see any mice coming into the arena? No. <laughs> no, because one day, you know, a little garage thing, one day I was coming in, you sure it was a mice? Yeah, it was a mice. No, it, it, was yeah. it, it was a rat. No, it was a rat, but I didn't want to use oh, it. So anyway, I'm, I'm in the thing, and I'm looking, and the rat's looking at me. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. He looking at me. He didn't move. I didn't move. You know, it was like one he didn't of those break stairs. out and say, no. go New York. Yeah. Go <laughs> no, he was looking at me. I was looking at him, and I, I was scared. He was scared. As soon as that door opened, I got out. He said, I'm going to get 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. Yeah, you didn't look at it like barbecue chicken?
<laughs> he looked like a, Ernie. Ernie, he looked like More. a big old cat. He was just looking at me, you know, looking. He was lying. He was like, oh, hey, I'm hey. serious. I promise you. Hey, hey, you got to put you your shoes up in the visiting locker room. Put your shoes up high when you get dressed. Ernie. You start telling stories, Ernie, I tune it truth. out, man. No, it's not. <laughs> for Shaquille O'Neal, for Grant Hill, for oh. Kenny Smith, for our special <laughs> guest, John Starks, and for Steve Smith, uh, and for Halle Berry. This is Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> go to you next time. I hate that song. I hate it.